Chapter 8 The waters bubbled, foamed and frothed. Through lane tree walls they cut their path. Down the valley they churned and bound, descending upon the scruffy town. Crooked shadows rippled against the sunset sky. The small, bushy silhouettes of the sprig and the tall, jagged outlines of many trees climbed carefully down the steep cliffs towards the town below. Their roots wriggled and writhed around, burrowing deep into the craggy rock face which overhung the muddy yard of the Bogwater Brewery. Scrag was laying in the old tin bath, fast asleep, snoring loudly and happily dreaming. He dreamt of seas of stinking sewage and tumbling tides of trash, into which he gleefully leapt and dived, paddled, bathed and drank. The sprig gently lowered itself on its branching arms into the yard below. Being careful not to make a sound, it slowly crept over to the bathtub. The sprig peered over the brim and into the tub below. Scrag was curled up tightly, fast asleep. His snores warbled and gurgled from his open beak, wriggling off his worm-like tongue. The sprig quietly backed away, crouched down into a ball and rolled across the yard to the open gate. It peeked out into the alley beyond. Scrag opened an eye. The squinting black bead glinted in the fading sunlight. A sly smile stretched from the corners of his beak. Scrag had lain in wait, pretending to be asleep. He had expected the inevitable reprisal of the Scruffswood's creatures. The sprig was ready to sneak away into the enveloping darkness of the alley. Scrag scrambled and shuffled himself to his paws and stood in the bath. He took a deep breath and opened his beak to shout. Aha! Caught in the act! He wanted to say, but all that came out was a minute, squeaking sound. For around his beak, tightly wound and coiled, was a long, thin branch, which snaked out of the night sky and encircled him. Many tall, crooked and gangly shapes came out of the creeping darkness and gathered around the bath, surrounding him with a fence of twisting shadow. Another branch began to wind around the bath, caging Scrag inside the tub. It was hoisted aloft and carried away, towards the gate and into the deep darkness of the alleyway beyond. The great squidge was packed full of scruffs, who had jammed together tightly, a swaying sea of sweaty, stinking fur. A noisy, squabbling rabble swelled and crashed upon a colossal, central mound of trash. Atop the mound stooped Munch, and upon his back stood Gibgob. Quiet, you stinking stack of fetid furballs! She bellowed over the squeals and squeaks coming from the churning scrum of scruffs below. Shut it or else, Munch threatened as he shook his paw in the air. The whole squidge fell silent. Gibgob took a moment to fix her wig and clear her throat before beginning her speech. We tried to smoke out the filthy trees, but that didn't stop them from planting their seeds. There was a loud, long boo and many hisses from the crowd. These stopped after a few moments when Munch raised his hand to silence them, which they did quickly out of fear. We tried to chop and saw them down, but were flung away into the town. The crowd began to moan and groan, nursing their wounds, bumps and bruises. But now those wicked trees will learn. We'll show them fire and watch them burn. The rabble roared and cheered through gritted teeth and waved their paws in the air. Tin Can Crud climbed the pile of trash and handed Gibgob a large, crooked torch. It was made from bundles of twigs and sticks and a wad of itskitch wool, soaked in Scrag's bin-juice tonic, 
which burned as well in the lamp as it did in the belly. Tinkan lifted the lid of his hat and rummaged around inside with his paw. Gibgob leaned closer, attempting to get a glimpse of what Tinkan had hidden within. After much wincing and tongue twirling, he finally pulled out a small, jagged fragment of glistening flint stone. Holding it up into the air, the crowd watched it intensely. Tinkan flicked the flint off the serrated lid of his hat. A shower of sparks rained down upon the crowd. Some of the sparks landed in fur, causing scruffs to leap around, patting themselves feverishly to quell the scorching embers. Gibgob raised the torch closer to the hat. Another flourish of sparks rained down upon it from the scraping flint. Suddenly, the torch erupted in a turbulent blast of fire. The huge flames caught everyone by surprise and singed the fetid wool of Gibgob's wig. The crowd collectively made dumbstruck cries of Ooh and Ah. Then they cheered loudly, pushing and shoving each other into a riotous delirium. In their mania, they failed to notice a small and unusually bushy scruff plodding through the crowd. The sprig had pulled some itchkits wool from a thatched roof and had covered its body, every branch and leaf, to disguise itself as a scruff. It squeezed through stench-filled fir canyons, between hopping and jiggling walls of sweaty scruffs. Eventually, it reached the front of the crowd, plopped itself down as small as it could huddle, and stayed quiet and still. Gibgob climbed further up Munch's back and stood on his head. He grunted and snorted with displeasure as her yellow, crusty toenails clasped deep into the fur on his face. She thrust the lit torch as high as she could and finished her speech. With this fire we'll burn the trees, their roots, the branches and their leaves. We'll char the wood and cut it down. Then on the ashes we'll build our town. The crowd cheered and danced. An overly excited scruff threw the sprig into the air and it was tossed around like a ball. One scruff punted the woolly bundle. Then another headed the spinning sprig out of the great squidge where it landed with a rustle into a thatched roof. The setting sun began to disappear behind the hills of the Grubber Valley and the plains beyond. The town of Scruffiness cast a furry, misshapen silhouette against the vibrant pinks and orange strokes which washed across the sky. A monstrous, billowing black cloud tumbled over the woods and down across the town, blanketing the sweaty streets and greasy hovels with sheets of rain. Embedded in the roof, the sprig poked helplessly from the thatch. Long, cumbersome silhouettes of the trees trundled over the rooftops towards it. They toppled and staggered as they clumsily clawed along the woolen thatch. Grouping around the sprig, they plucked it out of the tangled roof and back onto its roots. After a brief moment to regain its senses, the sprig began to lead them along the rooftops. Not long after, they reached the large gap above Bug Lane. One of the trees toppled, bridging the expanse enabling the rest of the grove to cross, balancing unsteadily. The bustling street below was filled with gangs of scruffs, who had poured out of the great squidge and began pulling huts apart, gathering wood and wool. Most of them were fighting amongst themselves, squabbling over whose home would be torn apart for torch-making materials. None of them noticed the travelling trees, who crossed the lane just above their heads. Upstream from the town, a great cavern sandwiched the scug, which had carved a snaking channel into the rock and strewn large boulders across the flow long ago. Water cascaded over the huge rocks. Rapids toiled and churned, frothing the clear water into a lively foam, which sparkled as it reflected the moonlight. Storm clouds were beginning to gather, draping the moon with slivers of dark indigo. The rustling bunch of trees, carrying the bath and the sprig, came waddling along the cliffs, gathering into a tight bundle as they reached the water's edge. 
They lurched over the river, standing close together on an outcropping of rocks. Their roots wrapped around the crags and into every crevice they could feel for. Across the way, on the other side of the river, a pair of small, dark and beady eyes watched the mobile grove scramble its way back from the edge. The watcher was a small, hunched old scruff named Nith. She sat upon a tree stump at the edge of the woods, which covered the valley, far away from the toxic town. Nith had been distracted while snoring on a large, shimmering fish, which she had stolen earlier from a furious bird. Upon seeing the sprig and its tree companions, her mouth gaped wide open, and the fish had fallen to the ground. A puzzled expression contorted the old scruff's face. From the tops of the wandering trees emerged a bundle of branches, wrapped tightly around an old tin bathtub. The elderly scruff leaned closer, furrowing her brow and squinting her eyes in disbelief. From between the branches poked the head of Scrag, who bit at the tough twig cage. The trees wobbled, leaning closer to the water's edge. Nif was deeply intrigued by the strange sight which she beheld. She picked up her fish and slowly gnawed on it with her toothless gums. Suddenly, the trees began to topple. One after another, they uprooted from their grasp of the cliff's rocky crevices and rolled over the edge, onto the rocks of the weir below. They piled up onto each other, one after another, until the wall of tree trunks had dammed the river. The water began to rise, slowly spreading out and up the steep embankments of the scug. Sat atop the dam, perched the bathtub, held tightly like an ornament upon a great mantle. From between the branches poked Scrag's waving arms. Old Nif, upon seeing the newly formed dam and the rising water, began to panic. She toppled backwards off her perch and onto her back. Her rotund body, fattened by many delicious, stolen meals, made her as immobile as an upturned tortoise. She rolled sideways, then back and forth, struggling until she finally made it onto her belly. Scrambling up onto her paws, her creaky bones popped and cracked. She promptly produced a crooked wooden cane from her threadbare woolen coat. She needed the stick to steady herself in her old age, and took great joy in thwacking scruffs on the head with it, whether they annoyed her or not. Nif resembled a ragged mop of mangled fur, as she shuffled down the worn, winding path along the riverbank. She limped as fast as she could, back towards the town. The sprig clambered down onto the dam of trees, and watched the waters rise. It gazed downriver towards the distant flow of the scug as it meandered its way towards the town, where flickering lit torches grew slowly in number, dotting the town in bright, warm firelight. Cold, heavy rain began to fall upon the sprig. Its leaves nodded to the increasing rhythm of the droplets. Sheets of water fell from the sky, dousing the many valleys of the scug. The river's rise accelerated, rapidly climbing the dam of stacked trees at an alarming rate. Scrag, who was still struggling between the branches, had managed to pop his head out of the cage to get a better look around. He instantly wished that he hadn't. The sprig, sensing the danger from the rising water, decided to climb up to the bathtub and release Scrag. It rustled its leaves attempting to tell the trees to loosen their grip on the old tin vessel. However, in the harsh, heavy rain, the rustling of the leaves could not be felt by the upturned trees. The sprig sprang onto the rounded rim of the bathtub. It fed one of its branches through a gap in the woven cage and held it out for Scrag to grab. The sprig's helpful gesture confused the frightened Scrag, who curled up at the opposite end of the bath. This tilted the tub suddenly, catching the sprig off balance, and sent it tumbling through the gap. The cornered scrag bared his claws, warning his new bathmate to keep its distance. The sprig once again extended a branch towards scrag, 
which confused the scared scruff, who gave the shrub a puzzled look, being unfamiliar with any gesture of friendship. Scruffs were mean, competitive and suspicious towards each other. There had been nights when Scrag would lie in his bathtub, watching the sunset, wondering how the first scruffs had ever worked together to pile up the plop and squish on the slop to mould the shape of the town. The sprig gestured towards the gap in the cage and shook its leaves. Scrag slowly raised his paw, nervously moving it towards the scrag, nervously moving it towards the sprig's outstretched branch. Suddenly, the bathtub shook violently. Scrag was thrown forwards into the sprig's bushy body, tangling fur around vines. Outside, the water had risen to the top of the dam, and the pile of trees had begun to dislodge. The trapped pair stuck their heads through the gap in the branches and looked upon the breaking barrier beneath. The branch cage loosened its grip on the bathtub as the water crashed through the wall of logs, carrying them and the old tin bath downriver upon a wall of cascading water.